1968, six months after the Six Day War, I was in Philadelphia. That's the West Bank's the West Bank community west of the Delaware. Okay. Anyway, while I was there in my senior high school, and we were still excited about what happened in the Six Day War, the trauma of hearing uh, Israel under under um, you know, siege in '67 is something we we still were getting over. And the teacher we had brought in a rabbi from Jerusalem who said we have an opportunity. The refugees, the people in the refugee camps, we can we can relate to them not as people who are way out there in Yamsville, but people we can deal with now. And let's do something. And this is a book I wrote called Unra Roadblock to Peace. Okay. And Unra Roadblock to Peace, I wrote a few years ago, explaining what's going on in the refugee camps. Because right away in 1970, I was fascinated with the fact that the refugee camps, 59 refugee camps where Arabs are living, uh, people who, who uh, left, left in 48 from their from their homes in 48, some of them were kicked out, some of them left voluntarily. There are all kinds of theories about how they left. Okay, then some people invented the Nakba. Nakba was invented in 1998. It's a story in itself. Anyway, this here, this picture here of, that you see here, this is of uh, a, a key, a, an image of a key, an image of a keyhole. It's opposite the refugee camp of of Ida. Ida is the Arabic word for return. Now that seems innocuous enough, except that every child in the UNRWA camps are taught the concept of right of return by force of arms. Didn't always be the force of arms, but that's something we traced. I made this first into a hobby and then into a profession to go after what's happening in UNRWA. Now, these people are being motivated. People in the refugee camps being motivated to take back what they think are their homes from 48 and to kill the people who live there, okay, who, who now live in the, in the places where they, they came from. Now, that became, it, it was originally an innocuous right of return, or we want to go back to, back to the places we left in 48, and then the, the so-called Palestinian education. The education, which was brought in by the PLO, okay. instructed everyone to, to, to arm themselves and to get ready for the big war, which, uh, which, uh, which as you may know, not no circuit it now, broke out on October 2nd. We predicted this, not because we're so such Nevi'im or because we know, because we have some, some divine spirit, but we basically was trained in social work to listen a little bit to people. My wife says, I. I listen to the people own rather more than I listen to her. That's okay. That's that's part of life. And this book here, which uh, I, I I raised money to in order to put it in the hands of parliamentarians and was connected, but it would try and translate it into German because Germany is the biggest funder of UNRWA. UNRWA is not funded by by the Arabs. It's funded by Western countries. It was originally funded through the Quakers, the American Friends Service Committee in Philadelphia, where I'm from, and uh, keeping people in refugee camps. Now, what, what we did, when our, I started a news agency at a research center in Jerusalem, and with very little following because people didn't want to hear the story. And people may, may not want to hear the story. At least now I'm sort of thinking what, you know, what, what led up to the October 7th rebellion. And, and uh, before I was talking about it theoretically, now it really happened. And to give people the motivation to, to uh, put their lives on the line and, and Get what they think has come into. Now the education starts very, very young. Now what we've been doing, I've been using Arab, Arab television Jews and veterans of Israeli intelligence to locate uh, summer camps where the kids are in, where, where the kids are indoctrinated with the idea that they have to go back to where they came from. So let's let me. I'm going to show you the the. the I'm going to show you three three short movies. The first one we did uh, summer 21. Uh, and um, it's pretty serious. You'll see exactly what it is, and then you'll we'll hear what you have to say. And I've got two more movies, uh, which are which I want to share with you, where we're on the ground, we go into the other schools and find out what's going on. And these are the children who are in that right now on the front lines. And uh, of course, the, bet, the, the, the war hasn't broken out in Bethlehem yet, but it will. Is that all that hmm? so Bethlehem? Yes. Bethlehem is the next place they're going to attack. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and Jerusalem. Now, if you're here for, for, for funny... Hmm? 
No, no, no. Refugee camps. Refugee camps. If you're here for a fun evening, go elsewhere. Uh, I'm not here to, to give you a fun story. I'm here to give you a real story. Uh, my rabbi in front would say, don't ask David Bedi what's new. He might tell you. And, uh, that's 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 a reality, which is not very happy. On the other hand, uh, knowing what's happening is part of the deal. Because people don't know. And people, have, uh, I, I, I credit Shimon Peres for keeping, keeping people in the dark. On January 1st, 2000, I'm, re- I'm a registered journalist. Uh, Peres called the press conference to say that the Palestinian Authority, in, which is the descendant of the PLO, uh, had a peace curriculum. And I was very surprised because we had been following this story for quite a while, and it didn't look like they were direct, direct, developing a peace curriculum. So after his lecture, I said, may I correct you? I just spoke with the with the head of the Palestinian Ministry of, of uh, Education. And he said, it doesn't exist. In other words, we, we had it, but we vetoed it. And he said, no, well, why don't you tell anybody? But anyway, the people of Israel had the impression there was a peace curriculum. And that was one of the problems we faced all along. Now, Paris is not available for comment. He has an unlisted member. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 I actually, when he didn't have an unlisted member, he still wouldn't answer. Him. Although I had a good relationship with him, with Paris, he spoke he spoke to me with respect. He called me Mister Adoni. I had a teacher who lived not far from here in the family neighborhoods. Who always said, "If someone calls you Adoni or Gveret, forget about it. You know, they, they, if you, they treat teach you with too, if they relate to you with too much respect, forget about it." And that's how Paris related to yours truly. Always related to me respectfully, but boy, he he wished he saw a bit more of yours truly. Okay, let's. <laughs> Let's push it where it says English. I'm going to show you the first movie and see these children getting ready for their summer. Okay. In the heart of Jerusalem, three minutes from the Hebrew University campus and adjacent to the new Jerusalem light rail train, sits the Shuafat refugee camp. Shuafat is one of 59 Palestinian Arab refugee camps run by the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA. UNRWA was spawned in the wake of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War exclusively for Arab refugees. Shuafat is unique. It is the only Arab refugee camp in Jerusalem and the only Arab refugee facility under formal Israeli control. Like other UNRWA camps in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, Palestinians refuse to move. Instead, they remain in camps and maintain their dream to return to Arab villages that existed before 1948. UNRWA is a political organization. Their goal is to maintain refugee status for Palestinians, instead of helping them get on with their lives. I decided to uh, create a plan uh, to kick UNRWA totally out of the city of Jerusalem. Over the decades, Palestinian leaders have encouraged the residents to remain and pass down the legacy of the right of return from one generation to the next. Their children are taught that they will destroy Israel and replace it with a Palestinian state. As in other UNRWA camps, hatred for Israel serves to unify everyone, especially young children, 
who are taught by UNRWA teachers to go to war against the Zionist usurpers. On the paths of Shu'afat, terror groups such as Hamas, Fatah, Islamic Jihad and the Popular Front operate openly and enjoy wild popularity among the residents. Today, 30,000 people live in the teeming alleyways of Shu'afat, where they can opt for full citizenship from Israel and receive free health insurance and education. At the same time, they receive benefits from UNRWA, including housing, health, and education for anyone defined as an Arab refugee. Competition to rule Shu'afat exists between UNRWA, the Palestinian Authority, Hamas, and Israel. Although UNRWA technically runs the camp, Shu'afat has become a wild west of terror, drugs, crime, prostitution, and extortion, with little in the way of sanitation to be found. Streets are filled with garbage and rodents. There is no official electric grid. Electricity is pilfered from exposed power lines. كلهم راسهم ناشف تقريبا والله المخيم يعني بالزمانات ما كان هيك يعني تغير دخلوا الفساد فيه يعني دمروه من القضايا اللي ممكن نحكي فيها عن مدرسة ذكور شوفات الأولى إنه إحنا بنعمل في بيئة اجتماعية صعبة مخيم ذكور شوفات هاي الزباين باب مدرسة قبل سنتين قبل سنتين ولد خش مستشفى غرفة الإنعاش إنه شرب مي من حنفيات هذول وباب قلب البرميل فوق بس إلى يمكن ست سبعة أيام ميتة والدود بقلب المي بقلب الخزانات عنا هون هاي بش مدرسة هاي سجن طلع الشبك كيف طلع الشبك اللي بشاور كيف هذا سجن وانا هلا بحكي لك من هذا السجن هذا مش مدرسه بتكسر دورج اه بقول لك الاستاذ فيش دورج اقعد على الارض ليش تقعد على الارض؟ احنا جايين نتعلم هون بطل كويس دور المخيم وشوف هلا الزباله وشوف الناس وشوف الاهاوي اللي انفتحت والاراجيل والناس صاروا يهملوا وعندك الحشيش وعندك المخدرات هيك هيك احنا عايشين مزللين هلا في شباب بجيلي واصغر مني فبيحكوا لك يا عم احنا هون مش قادرين نعيش ولا هون ولا برا ليش؟ زهقوا زي... زهقوا الدنيا احنا احنا في المخيم في عنا حرامية في شباب بيجوا في الليل بيقعدوا يطخطخوا بيجوا بيضربوا ملتوفات بالشارع 
بيقعدوا يطخطخوا بيجوا بيسرقوا الدور يعني اليوم يعني الواحد لازم ياخذ حذر خاصة من مخيم شغفات يعني نحن في منطقة لا يوجد فيها أي قانون، منطقة كلها فوضى، منطقة كلها عبث، فبالتالي وقعنا كان صعب جدا، نحن اليوم نتكلم عن 80% نسبة البناء الغير قانوني في مخيم شعفات والمناطق المجاورة، فبالتالي لا رقيبة ولا حسيب، لا نعرف ماذا يضع في يعني للأسف الشديد لا نعرف ما هي نسبة الخطورة في هذه المباني، لا نعرف ما هي ماذا وضع بهذه البيوت، لا نعرف إن كان هناك فعلا بنية تحتية جاهزة، لا أحد يعرف. لكن البنى هذا العشر شوائي يعني يعني اي هزه ارضيه محتمل يضوع كل العمارات هذه مخيم شعفاط هي بيئه خصبه لتجاره المخدرات لتجاره السلاح للجرائم بانواعها للعنف العنف السكاني العنف اللفظي العنف الجسدي الاولاد بيسمعوا الطخ يوم يوم من الحشاشين من الحراميه من كل شيء مخطفين الاولاد هذا هون مجتمعنا كثير فاشل والحشيش داير ذا كانه بيبيعوا بندوره فيه بتواجهنا مشاكل كثيره في المخيم منها الضغط السكاني الرهيب هذه واحد اثنين تجاره المخدرات اللي اصبحت موجوده بكثره اليوم نسمع مستر نايس ومستولون و وحشيش وهيروين والى اخره كل هالامور هاي بنسمعها وشباب صغير بتتداولها شباب صغير بتستعملها انه هناك هاد قولي انه او يمكن اول مره طفل يشوفه اي خوف بس بعدين تعودنا زي كانه تعويل ضارنا في الحمام برا او او هذا الارضي اه كان يطلع منه هاي آه بالنسبه للزباله كل الجيران بتلم كل العالم بتزت هون كل الجيران فوق بزت زباله ولا واحد مهتم لا اسرائيل ولا اي دوله ولا ولا اي بلديه معنيه انها تجيب الزباله هون. تعال هون بعد كمان ساعه انه تعتم تلاقي هون حفله عرف. حفله فيران هون اكثر من الشعب. اكثر من الشعب هون حفله. بتشوف هون مليان. انا مش مبسوط يعني مثلا بطلع من الدار بطلع كله خبص الشوارع مجاري مأزم المحسوم وهيك يعني اذا كنا عايش بخيمه يعني. يعني هون في المخيم لا في ملاعب نلعب والطرق يعني مش, مش منيحة وزبالة يعني في كل مكان محطوطة والجدار وكثافة سكانية كبيرة. أونرا now raises millions from 40 nations to care for Palestinians, yet few of those dollars reach the people of Shuafat. Two Unra schools exist, and a UN-run medical facility is on the scene, but very little else. Has the time come to end UNRWA's presence in Shuafat and to end the quagmire of Arab refugees in Jerusalem? With such a change, residents of Shuafat could move on and live with dignity. Or will Shuafat implode and ignite Jerusalem and maybe the entire Middle East? That short movie uh, has had some effect. Whose agency ready to show that? These are the people. So these are the people right now in uh, in rebellion against Israel. They blame Israel for being in the refugee camps as opposed to the Palestinian Authority, the PLO, who placed them there. This is the condition. The conditions have improved a little bit since we knew, we, we in terms of the garbage and stuff like that, but it basically maintains the same situation. Okay, so that when you hear about uh, activity here in Jerusalem of people from the Arab refugee camps, this is what you're seeing. Now, I'm going to show you a full, a, a short movie that I couldn't get it before. You can hear me okay? Okay. I'm going to show you now the kids going through military training, which was ignored by the army. The Askar refugee camp, located on the outskirts of Nablus, is one of 19 Palestinian refugee camps in Judea and Samaria, controlled and maintained by UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which benefits from a whopping budget of $1.6 billion, flowing from 67 donor countries and 33 international NGOs. 58% of that budget funds the UNRWA school system, which emphasizes and promotes the right of return, 
as the underlying principle for its operations, its very reason for being. احنا تفجرنا من يافا واليوم جايين نحكي عن حقنا بالعودة وبنكفل حدت ما نرجع لأراضينا في يافا وأراضينا بحيفا والليل والرملة إنه راح نرجع قريبا جدا لو شو ما يصير يصير مش راح يصير سلام السلام بدنا شيء شو بعلموك عن حق العودة بالمدارس؟ عاد ما إحنا مش راح شهادة كلنا وإحنا لازم ندافع عن وطننا كتير راح راح نخد راح نخد حقنا والله ينتقم منه إن شاء الله يموت كلهم نخد عاشم فلسطين وراح راح تضل هلنا مش راح تتغير لا راح تضل هلنا المستوطنين اللي فيها كلهم راح يمتخوا يا توتة الدار صبرك على الزمان انجار لا بد ما نعود مهما طول المشوار يا با يا با يا با يا با يا با وحابة أقولكم إنه مفتاح العودة لساته معنا وراح نفتح يوم من الأيام في بيوتنا مثل إني بتعلم بجهدي وحق إني أخذ وطني وحر وحر فلسطين يعني الناس الشهداء اللي يعني بدر يحر فلسطين إذا بنضلهم هيك أنا نور المسيمة مديرة نادي أشبال العاصفة إحنا كل سنة اللجنة الوطنية بتعمل نوادي صيفية في مخيم عسكر قسمنا الأطفال لأربع مجموعات حت بأسماء شهدائنا في مخيم عسكر أساسهم يضلوا حاضرين في ذهنهم وفي أفكارهم وتعلموا منهم البطولة ويضلهم مستمرين في درب المقاومة وفي عندهم يعني كل طفل مستعد يكون مشروع شهيد مقابل إنه يحافظ على المبادئ اللي إحنا مترسخة عنا حقنا في العودة وإن شاء الله انتفاضة أقوى جاية وهذول أطفالنا هم اللي راح يقودوها. The delusion of refugees going back to homes they left in the wake of the 1948 war, homes which are long gone, has turned into the source, the motivation, and the promoter of the armed rebellion against the Jews. Askar is the smallest of the refugee camps in Judea and Samaria, yet stands out as the camp with the highest amount of Palestinians engaged in terror activity in relation to the number of its inhabitants including the highest number of Shahids, armed terrorists killed in the act of murder, and the largest number of convicts serving life imprisonment for murder. مخيم مقاتل, مخيم مقاوم, مخيم يقدم الشهيد تلو الشهيد ومن جميع الأطياف ومن جميع الأعمار ومن جميع التوجهات. From this refugee camp embarked the Palestinian assassin of brothers Hillel and Yagel Yaniv from Harbracha, who were killed driving through Hawara in February 2023. It was also home to a 15-year-old terrorist who set out this past April from Askar, armed with a gun, shooting and severely injuring two Jews in Jerusalem. Askar is also home to the three-man terrorist squad who, on April 7, 2023, murdered Lucy D. and her two daughters, 15-year-old Reina and 20-year-old Maya, in a drive-by shooting. The perpetrators of these heinous killings are hailed today as heroes in the Askar refugee camp. As soon as the murder of this Jewish woman and her two young daughters became known, sweets were handed out on the streets of Askar as an expression of happiness and triumph. The funeral of Hassan Katanani, the terrorist who pulled the gun on the D family, grew into a huge rally of support, which consisted of everyone from the Askar refugee camp as they celebrated the murder of Jews and the destruction of Israel. <laughs> حسن القطراني سوى عملية لأنه أول شيء دافع عن وطنه وعن كرامته رجع شوية من الكرامة لما هجرونا من ديورنا وبيوتنا من أسيطر أسيطر على أراضينا مين هدول مين هدول إبراهيم النابلسي ومديع الحوا وعبد الله الحسني أحمد السعدي مين هدول مين هدول كل مخيم أفطار في صالح صبرة في معاز مصر في حسن قطناني في كتير شهداء أسكر ونعطي لأخوتنا المقاومين نهديهم سلام والله يحمي كل واحد مقاوم لحية لكتيبة عسكر وكتيبة جنين وكتيبة بلاطة هاد عمي الله يرحمه استشهد ألفين واثنين وعشرين ثمانية وعشرين عشرة ألفين واثنين وعشرين Posters with pictures of the killers, 
were plastered in every corner of Oscar, while songs of praise for the murderers were composed in their honor. Oscar's UNRWA summer camps were even named for these murderers. The family of Hassan Katanani was congratulated with pride and approval that their son had the honor to kill a Jewish woman and her two young daughters while driving in their car to meet family members during the Passover holiday. They expressed their hope and wish that the terrorist young children would go in the footsteps of their father and merit to become holy shaheed, just like their blessed father. The terrorist mother expressed herself in her own way. <laughs> Memorial ceremonies for holy martyrs and festivals celebrate the release of terrorists from prison at weddings and family celebrations accompanied by shooting rifles and pistols. Hundreds of Oscar youth take part in these ceremonies, including children and young adolescents, absorbing the message of blind hatred so that they too can become the killers and shaheeds of the future. The amount of weapons in the Oscar refugee camp are huge. Oscar now boasts at least 200 wanted terrorists just waiting to commit the next acts of murder. This is how the right of return, the reason for being of UNRWA, has become a source of lethal violence that surpasses the organization's hollow slogans for peace. The time has come for donor nations to think again about blind support for UNRWA. This is very real, and this is just not everyone's in a in a, an atmosphere of denial. That's what I'm dealing with all these years, and now unfortunately, it's it's real. Last movie. Uh, I want you to see the children going through military exercises. I produced 24 movies. I have no idea how to produce a movie, and somehow I did it. Hamas and Islamic Jihad Summer Camps 2021, the way children from UNRWA schools spent their summer vacation. جيل فلسطين احنا بنعشق الشهاده والله احنا بنجاهد عشان القدس وعشان وطننا ونموت شهداء هاي جيل التحرير ها بنحرر فلسطين والقدس وكل الدول المحتله As the world has witnessed every year over the past decade, UNRWA students, even those who have not yet finished elementary school, are lured to participate in summer camps for armed guerrilla warfare. These children, who should expect UNRWA to provide a normal summer vacation environment, fall prey to terror groups that lurk everywhere, 
or are sent to these programs by their own parents. This summer, armed operatives signed up tens of thousands of UNRWA students ages 10 to 17 for summer camps offering extensive military training. Recruitment took place in mosques and at registration tables throughout the Gaza Strip. <laughs> At terrorist bases belonging to Hamas and Islamic Jihad, the youngsters experienced intense military discipline and systematic indoctrination with one objective in mind, to fight and die for jihad and to annihilate the Jewish state. <laughs> At the summer camps, UNRWA youngsters learned to view the United States and Israel as the devil, the ultimate enemy. They trampled on the flags of both nations and set them afire. جايين اليوم إحنا عن مخيمات سيف القدس اقترب الوعد. حتى نبنى يسامنا وأجسادنا حتى نقهر بني صهيون ونرجع على أراضينا المحتلة كان اليهود من هم قيمة هنا يعني من هم أرض نتضرب نجاهد في سبيل الله وهذا نستشهد إن شاء الله في سبيل الله تكبير تكبير حلمي إنه أطلع إني يعني أسير دكتور ومقاوم يعني علم مع جهات في سبيل الله وعشان نحرر فلسطين ونطهرها من اليهود من الاحتلال الصهيوني المجرم. ما فيش حاجة اسمها دولة إسرائيل أصلاً. عشان يكون لهم عاصمة قبل كل شيء. إذا القدس عاصمة فلسطين الأبدية. They learned how to use automatic weapons of all kinds. Instructors taught them how to assemble each weapon, hold it correctly, and operate it. أول إشي تدريب أول إشي يعلمونا طريقة اسم السلاح وفك السلاح وكيف تنظيف تاني إشي طريقة حمل السلاح تد إشي عندك التدريب القوي دك من تحت تحت الزحف تدريب تالت إشي إن نحمل وكيف نطخ لقدام نتعلم كيف نطخ ونصوب الأهداف القريبة ونتعلم على الأسلحة بأنواعها المدربين ما شاء الله عليهم هان بعلم كل أنف أنواع الأسلحة هان. The terrorists working as camp instructors provided them with detailed descriptions of the mortars used by Hamas and Islamic Jihad, and even of the tanks used by the Israel Defense Forces. The UNRWA youngsters practiced fighting in built-up areas as well as commandeering a vehicle. إحنا ما بنقدر نحرر إلا بالسلاح زي ما هم بحربونا بالسلاح إحنا حنحرر بالسلاح هي هيك المعادلة ما بيفهموا إلا باللغة السلاح. One exercise featured a mock-up of an Israeli tank. The idea was to teach the children how to sneak up on a tank and kidnap Israeli soldiers. عشان إيش إحنا منحارب ومنتعلم من الصغار عشان إيش عشان لما نكبر نبقى مستعدين لمقاتلة اليهود وتطردهم من البلد لأنه هذه مش بلدهم يرجع بلدهم هذه مش بلدهم هذه بلدنا لما أكبر بدي أستشهد وأعمل عمليات مدافع عن وطن وعن أرضه هذه فلسطين أنا والله نفسي أستشهد حط السيف جبال السيف وإحنا رجال محمد ضيف 
نعلمهم فن القتال مع هذا العدو المغتصب الذي اغتصب أرضنا فنحن سنعد هذا الجيل وأن من أجل أن نفجر جماجم هذا العدو من تحت الأرض نخرج إليكم ندق الرعب في قلوبكم ومن فوق الأرض بصواريخنا نقطعكم أشتاء أشتاء Top commanders from Hamas and Islamic Jihad were in charge of the military training and stated clearly that the goal was for the youngsters to take part in the future battle against Israel. <laughs> The children attending the summer camps were taught about their so-called inalienable right of return to cities inside Israel, such as Jaffa, Lod, Haifa, Beersheba, Ashdod, and Ashkelon. With these cities just kilometers away, they were told that a return was literally in reach. إن شاء الله بدنا نرجع وإن شاء الله كل كتاب القسم حيكونوا معنا لأنه هذه بلدي الأصلية رح نحررها وغصب عنه أن الاحتلال الصهيوني طرد أباءنا وأجدادنا من أجلنا لنضحي في دمنا ونرجع حيفا والجاهل نحن نساء جهادي شهادة غربنا Girls affiliated with Islamic Jihad happily recited the mantras of terror. They are an integral part of the movement, meant to show that terrorism is not a male-dominated system. لا بد لنا أن نقوم ببناء جيل قرآني واعي لا بد لنا كأمهات فلسطينيات أن نرسل أبناؤنا إلى هذه الأماكن لنزرع فيهم حب البلاد حب فلسطين حب الجهاد لا بد أن كل أم أمينة تكون أم الشهيد أخت الشهيد يعني نزيد الوعي الثقافي عند أبنائنا حتى يجي يوم وهذه الأطفال يصير يعني مقاومة وتصير الدفع هي عن الأرض والرجعة إلنا The women of Islamic Jihad bestowed the legacy of their cause on the next generation Notably, the summer camps featured the photos of female suicide bombers who blew themselves up to murder Jews. أنا بلدة الأصلية بلدة تيبنا حنعود عليها بالحجر والسكينة. هم أصلاً أعداء ويهود هم من هم اليهود هم طبعاً قبائل تجمعت من كل دول العالم وأجهد كون لهم وطن كما يدعون لهم في فلسطين. حط السيف بال السيف. حط السيف بال السيف. As the summer camps drew to a close, each camper received a certificate of appreciation, complete with his photo, attesting to the completion of formal weapons training and a readiness to fight the Jews. For the UNRWA students, these photos depicted them with automatic weapons and showed them imbued with ideological motivation. <laughs> Clearly, the Hamas and Islamic Jihad summer camps have become training grounds for the vilification of Israel. UNRWA teachers and textbooks complement this with an ideology and curriculum that promotes armed struggle for the right of return. Last May, the most recent outbreak of anti-Israel violence in Gaza exposed a tunnel dug by Hamas under a school in UNRWA's Zaytun refugee camp. Here is the evidence. Hamas thus takes the UNRWA children captive not only during the summer, but during the school year itself. UNRWA students constitute a future terror army aimed at liquidating Israel based on the illusion of a right of return. UNRWA can no longer act as if it does not know. UNRWA is proud of its 400 schools in Gaza, Judea and Samaria and Jerusalem. It allocates 58% of its budget for an education system that indoctrinates a new generation for war. In essence, it has abandoned its students. The time has come for UNRWA to teach peace and coexistence during both the school year and summer vacation. The time has come for the world to demand oversight of UNRWA schools. 
the time has come for donor nations to put an end to UNRWA anarchy. صف سادس عمر 12 يافا انا اسمي حمزه بوهين من بلد برير اسمي قصايا عمر 13 سنه من المجد انا من بلده حمامه اسمي خالد انا اسمي اسر البيك من بلده تربيا شمس يوسف حسين من حيفا اسمي عاصم فرج من الشجاعيه واصلي من بئر السبع انا اسمي بغاب سكران عمر 15 سنه انا اصلي من المجد عبد الله تاسع يافا محمد عبد الله سليم 13 سنة بير السبع فايز عبد الكريم مصطاح الداية 12 من حيفا أنا اسمي أسماء الجراح أنا بلدة الأصلية بلدة تيبنا اسمي فداء أبو طيور لاجئة أصل من بلدة سرفند العمار This is, this is what we have. I look for people to help us. Uh, we haven't had anyone ready to help, help us at all, at all, anywhere, any place. The reason why I, I'm encouraged is because no one wanted to help us. Fine. That means that we're fighting from, from working from zero. When you have no support whatsoever, that's the best thing in the world because there's no other, there's no way to, there's no way to go but, but up. <laughs> that's the way I think. And that's the way I saw it when, 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 when the, when, Things broke out on Simchat Torah. Well, I'll take questions, not to worry. Uh, on Simchat Torah, I felt the, the, that Hashem was giving us a message about Simchat Torah, that it broke out. The, the, these are the people who were those children. I don't know how many of them have died, meanwhile, probably quite a few of them, but they died with arms in their hands. Where did the guns come from? First, they came from Israel. Israel. 1995, we, we filmed the children going to training with guns that Israel supplied. Oh, uh, there was supposed to be supervision. There wasn't supervision. Oh. Uh, then other countries join in with Israel's approval. Oh, uh, you understand why we're not so popular with the government of Israel. We're not against the government of Israel, but they don't want us to get this this point across. Now, what we have to do is find ways to find the find people who are sponsored with this these kind of movies that Israel Television wouldn't take it. I mean, there was for a while we had one correspondent in Israel Television who was helping us out, someone named Yaakov Akimir. Uh, he put put out five of our movies on, but he was fired for being too. Uh, right. To a nationalist or whatever, to be he was fired for being too open for getting this stuff out. Uh, so there is no one. We can only depend. For example, there's no reason why we can't buy space on uh, on various kind of channels. No, there's no reason why we can't buy space in newspapers. There's no reason why we can't have public lectures. I have prepared material in Germany because Germany is the biggest funder, and I have some good news uh, with all this bad news. We were able to get to uh, the United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee with this material, and uh, several years ago, we found a, a, a Christian, very fundamentalist Christian senator named James Rich, who believes that this this is this is Hashem's land, and uh, he was very upset to see that this kind of stuff was being taught, and uh, he, he he demanded a U.S. investigation of the of the curriculum and came to the same conclusions we have. What's most important is that he came up with a, a legislation which was passed that if UNRWA does not uh, change its curriculum, they don't get any money. And whereas the United States has allocated money over the last two years, they haven't gotten a penny thanks to Senator Bush. There's people like that that Hashem sends us to, to work with us. You were pretty successful in the Trump, too. Well, with, it, was, with, it was too successful because I was I just happened to sit next to the Trump's um, temporary ambassador to the United States and I told her what I was doing, and I didn't know who I was talking to. And I, I was talking to Trump's representative in the United States. Uh, in Israel. Oh, 
And she says, may I bring this to the president? Well, of course, well, sure. She brought his material, threw it on, the, on, the, on his desk, literally. But then he went too far. He used a sledgehammer. Instead of having a, a coordinator with all the countries giving to UNRWA, he just did it on his own. On his own and therefore, it inspired Germany, the UK, um, and uh, a few other countries to take his place. So now what's happened under Biden, I don't think, I don't know if Biden knows what's going on. That's not the point. Under Biden, we have a better, better situation where it's conditionality. It's not whatever. Anyway, my message is if you'd like to get involved, I'll get, get you involved. You, you, people, we need people to uh, approach the German, the, the, the German and Swiss, who are the biggest funders of one right now. We need people to uh, help us organize briefings for um, in, in, in Jerusalem for, for embassies, for, for delegations, whatever. Uh, I can't do this on my own. I have a few staff, but I've had to let them go and couldn't pay them anymore. But you know, in other words, from the depths I've called you, I really feel this is a, for me, this has been a, been a mission. Uh, my wife says, I, I know the names of the owner camps better than my own grandchildren, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, I don't, this is, this is a, uh, it's a professional, I'm trained in social work. Sometimes you work, work from the bottom of my book, which I have copies of. I, I, we sell copies and if we, if we can uh, get a grant for more copies, we'll get to every parliamentary possible. Maybe we'll have some questions. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you very, very much. First of all, to Mr. Badin for sharing with us this important information. It's really great things to, um, to talk about and to understand. There is also, um, um, on the positive side of education, and this is something the Rebbe always encouraged us to basically um, think about education at least every single day. Um, and it's sometimes education uh, for our children, sometimes for very grandchildren, etc. So I want to thank um, uh, the Ayello family for hosting us. And right after we finish uh, the lecture, you're welcome to enjoy this, this soup and many more. Um, uh, uh, also, a reminder about the suggested donation. This goes to support the families of the reserves that are in the front line. We take care here. Mrs. Goldberg has a whole group of uh, volunteers that take care of the families with uh, with meals, activities for the kids, etc. So you're welcome to do it all by the link. Or we've got here a special box for that. And um, I wanted to also ask Rabbi Weinberg to share with us an important uh, message so this is uh, um, uh, the last five minutes of the lecture is dedicated to an important message. And afterwards, you are, we will be able to follow up also with uh, Mr. Badin and ask any further questions. And um, thank you very much for coming out tonight.